Hi there. <laughs> My name's Eric, creator of uh, this program called Forever Kyoto, where the whole um, <clears throat> goal is to help try and solve this worsening problem in Kyoto of tourism concentration. I work at the School of Global Tourism, Kyoto University of Foreign Studies, and I uh, started this pro. This let's get some daylight in here. There we go. Looking at Kyoto here, almost like a satellite view, a low Earth orbit kind of thing. And below here is Osaka. Come up here, there's Shiga, this Kyoto city, right about here. And this whole area here is Kyoto Prefecture. And there is a record number of foreign tourism in Kyoto, record number of foreign tourists visiting Kyoto every year, and they're all going basically to the same places at the same times. And there's a problem with concentration. So I started this program called Forever Kyoto to try and show and promote areas of Kyoto where the local communities might invite a few more tourists and kind of diffuse the way tourism is coming in. You could see a video down here, <laughs> um, but I had created in 2011. And what I'm going to do now is take you on a tour, a virtual tour of all these places introduced in this video. I'll put a link to that video in the description here so you can uh, go watch it later and hear about some of these places. But um, one of the beauties of virtual tourism, one of the things that uh, I research here, the uh, School of Global Tourism, is we can visit them together in a virtual sense. You don't have to leave. So let's go to the first place. Um, I'm going to fly over here. This is the northern part of Kyoto. It's called Tango, the Tango Peninsula that sticks here. You notice there's a very unique natural sandbar that connects parts of this, what's called Miyazu Bay. And this is one of the uh, most beautiful places that they say it's in, in uh, Japan, one of the three most scenic spots in Japan. I'll just go and fly around a little bit here. So as you can see, there's um, you can go up on the hills on each side and take a look. You can bike and walk across. You can uh, beach. Swim, you're swimming, um, not all year round, but a good portion of the summer you can come swimming here. And it's close to the Miyazu city, where I actually I lived here for about 10 years. And it's about, oh, 90 minute drive now to Kyoto city. So it's a good ways out from the city. You can get buses here quite easily as well. So it's not that far. You could do it on a day trip very easily and get away from a lot of the bustle of the inner city. So let's say go down here and let's take a look what it might look like. So <clears throat> we're um, this is called the uh, Kyoto View Land, right? And looking out towards this is probably mm, springtime, mid spring. Very hot in the summertime. It's about three kilometers back to the other side. You can kind of fly over and see. There's a bridge down here. Very interesting swing bridge. Let's see if we can take a look at that. That opens up. Here it is opening up. It's actually, we're on a boat coming through the bridge. Very interesting view here. And that swings back shut. You can continue to walk across the bay. Let's go take over here to the, the beach. Right. One of the bridges across here, back there, there's Miyazu City. We were just looking at the view from up there. Let's fly over back down to the other side and take a look what it looks like from the other side. <clears throat> there's a couple of nice temples here. Another um, kind of culturally relevant places to visit as well. Go 
couple of scenic spots. All right, so that's the first spot on the video. It's called Amano Hashidate, which in English is translated to Bridge to Heaven. So and if you want to go deeper up into the Tongo Peninsula, we'll go flying out here to the very edge, the tip of the Tongo Peninsula, which is another hour drive from Amanohashidate. So it's about mm, two, two and a half hours from Kyoto City. And this is a bay within a bay. This is called Ine, and it's famous for Funaya. Funaya. Let's take a look at the bay here. So it's a fishing village, and all of the houses are built right into the bay, and the garages are boats. And actually, there's been a lot of tourism development in this area where you actually stay at these Funaya. Um, and have a boat ride out into the bay. Um, as far as there's a lot of nature here, there's a lot of boat rides, a lot of be uh, delicious seafood that comes from right out of the bay, but um, not terribly much else to do in this area. Let's go see if we can get into the bay here. There's a couple of boat rides you can see. <clears throat> right? Some fishing village. We were just up, looking down from the scenic spot up there. So if you want to come drive and take a look from the scenic spot, take a drive through the area. Nice to be come through. You could charter a boat or rent a funaya for the evening. One good thing you could do, though, is where you could take a ferry. That's a whole kind of a day trip as well. There's a public ferry. You can start off. Whoa, let's go back to Amnahashidate. You take a day, take a bus or drive up to Miyazu and come into the ferry port. Where is it? Over here. This is the main shopping area in Miyazu. It's called Mippo, and there's a ferry port here. And from here, ferry port, you can buy a ticket that will take you to the ferry port at Amanohashidate, I think it's here somewhere. Here it is, right? And if you want to spend, a, instead of driving, you can spend, it takes a little bit longer, but you can spend about a two and a half hour boat ride all the way out to Ine for a nice um, scenic view of the, um, the area, the bay. But if you want to drive, it's a beautiful drive. You go right up the coast here. And if you want to keep driving, you could. I recommend this drive to go all along the coast. There's an onsen up on the top part here, and you come back around and you drive back down to Kyoto. But if you don't have a car, I recommend taking a train to Amanohashidate Station, train station. You can see it right there. Hopping on a ferry, either going across, but if you want to spend even longer, you can take the ferry all the way to Ine. This would be a beautiful stop. All right, that's the first two th places I, in the video. Let's go to, I don't want to save it. I just did. <laughs> Let's see here. In the video, I also had, we did Ine, we did Monju. Let's go to Fukuchiyama, which is just south. It's about 90 minute, uh, 45 minutes to an hour south. So moving out that way to the coast of Miyazu where we just were, back out, back, back down that way, another 90 minutes to Kyoto. This is one of the largest cities in northern Kyoto, and it has one of the largest still intact castles. This is Fukuchiyama Castle. I visited here several times. Um, they have a couple of experiences that you could do here. Um, the visit will last, mm, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, and you can uh, walk around the uh, downtown district of Fukuchiyama, but it's uh, just a quick train ride from Kyoto Station, about 90 minutes, to Fukuchiyama Station, which is just down the road, down here. 
So you take a train from Kyoto Station to Fukuchiyama Station. Oh, hey, it's my picture, Forever Kyoto. How about that? And you can walk from here to um, the castle. Oh, that's very cool that I'm showing my project and I hopped into a 360 photo of my own photo. I got to save this. Hmm, that's very cool. All right, <clears throat> let's go on to the next spot. So that's probably a good half day shot out to come see the castle and some of the, oh, nothing about this area. Some of the best ramen in Kyoto is not in the city. It's up here in the northern part, some of the lesser traveled areas. So if you want to come have some really authentic, great ramen, you got to come up here and just search online for the best uh, rated five-star places, ramen places, and they're in this city. They're around here walking distance. There's at least three of them within walking distance of uh, Fukuchiyama Station. So come up, have some ramen, see the castle. That's a nice three-quarter, half-day venture out from the city, get away from all the hustle and bustle. Okay? All right, let's go on to the next one. Let's go to even a more secluded place. If you want to get very, very non, this is this, this is what local tourists like to come. It's a very local village. It's called Miyamacho, and it's so sparse out in the mountains between Kyoto and the northern part of Kyoto that there are these just little tiny villages that are nestled nestled into the side of the 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 uh, mountains here. So here's one. All right, there's a couple more over here. So flip up so I can show you what I'm talking about here. All right. All right, so Miyamacho going up that way to Miyazu. I think there's the coast up there. Kyoto's down this way. Oh, getting a little dizzy here. Um, so it's a nice road you can drive through here. Unfortunately, if you want to come here without a car, it's going to be long bus rides with buses only coming every hour or so. But if you really want to get out, this is probably the, out of all the ones things I'll show you today, this is the one that'll get you out where only domestic Japanese tourists would like to come. And this is like the old style village. Uh, way back in the day, they used to have thatch roof villages, thatch roof houses, and this is st uh, this village still traditionally has these old style houses where you can come and just kind of see the old style architecture and the old style communities that used to be in Japan uh, long, long ago. Let's take a look. See, oh, here we go. Here's some old thatch roof villages. And she could come up here. They have local tours, right? This is, you can see this is this in the middle of the, what's called the Inaka, the countryside, right? So this is very old school, very traditional. And huh, it's just a way to come out and see some of Japan that not a lot of people get to see. And you get to be, be nice, you know, out away from the hustle and bustle as much as possible, right? If that's your goal, this is where one of the places you want to come see. That's called Miyamacho. All right, let's fly up here. Let's get a more broad view. All right, so Miyamacho was here. There's the Tongo Peninsula, Amanashidate, Ine is over there. Kyoto City, we're getting closer to Kyoto City down here. This is like Biwa, I think. Right. Let's go on to the next spot. Mm -hmm. Kameoka, which is just over the mountains from Kyoto City. Um, nice flat lands to here where a lot of it's mostly an industrial city, but um, quite a lot of people live here. It's a decent sized city. And just over this mountain is Kyoto City. And you can see the train tracks coming out. And there's a nice river that cuts through the mountains, and you could go through this river, this nice, naturous, mountainous area, by way of old school locomotive or by 
traditional Japanese boat ride. So I'll just take a look. A lot of the boat rides start around this area. You get in this boat. It's a wooden boat. It has, has about, mm, I'd probably say about 10 people in it. And just a, a guy with a big stick <laughs> pushing you down the river. It's very nice. Or there's a traditional train track that goes down the river as well. Here, something looks something like this, right? Very old school, slow train ride that you could take from a place called Arashiyama in Kyoto City and take it through the mountains, take it by the river. So you can go by boat or you could go by train. So we're just going to cruise through the river here. Because this is closer to Kyoto City, these attractions are going to be a bit more crowded. So if you want to do this, I recommend reservations in advance and having a higher tolerance for um, large crowds, especially in spring and fall when the weather is nicest. Same photo. You see a little bit of the old school train track here. Very nice spring day, looks like. Uh, it's going this way. And here we are, the train track. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if somebody got up on, here, on the train track to take a picture, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. So let's just go up over the mountain into Kyoto. Right? You can see the river still going here. And a very famous spot in Kyoto, not too far away from where I live now, called Arashiyama. One of the more traditional places in Kyoto. Lots of traditional restaurants. Monkey Mountain is here. Um, it does the riverbank. Uh, there's a bamboo forest is in this area. But this is becoming very, very crowded. So you'll be fighting a lot of... This is one of the places I was talking about before. I'm trying to keep people away from me yet. I'm showing it to you. Let's go to another place. I show the banks of Uji River. And Uji, Uji River is on the um, the east part of Kyoto. And it goes cuts through Kyoto and goes all the way down through the lower parts of Kyoto and into Osaka. And on one of these banks, they have <clears throat> some traditional shows and restaurants and places to visit. It's just um, if you you're in the Kyoto city and you only have a couple hours, you can come out to Uji River and find a nice restaurant to eat on the river. It's um, slightly out of the way. If you want to keep going down over the hill, uh, between Osaka and Kyoto, most of it's still city, but there are a few next to the mountains. There's a place called Wakuza. Here we go. Wakuza Village. And this is where huge green tea plantations are found. And you can come down here and take tours. It's beautiful, isn't it? Of tea plantations. And they have these cooperatives here where you could actually come down and kind of make your own tea, have an experience of making your own tea, harvesting your own tea. Or you could sponsor a, a small plot or even just a row, depending on who you team up with. And with a local, manage and grow green tea. There's a lot of init cool initiatives around, around that. And I think that's a great way to both connect and have a little bit of sustainability with your tourism. So that's called the Wakuza Cha um, and the Wakuza Village. And there's quite, a, I could recommend a few of them, a few different places to, to visit.
right? So isn't that beautiful? A few different companies you can come tour. A lot of them are world famous, actually. A lot of green tea is grown here. But it'd be a good place just to get away for a little bit and kind of experience a little more tradition, connect with the, with the local communities. Right. Hmm. I like to end this up by going into orbit. <laughs> That was me, Eric, introducing <laughs> um, my Forever Kyoto project. Hope you enjoy the tour. Follow some links down below to learn a little bit more. Okay, bye for now.